Hey, are you shy? Well, don't clam up on me yet. What, you never talked to an oyster before? <laughs> First time for everything. I'm here to answer the most common questions humans have about my kind. Like how we make pearls and why we spit. <laughs> Can you see my back? On the outside, I have a hard shell. If you look at my oyster relatives, you'll notice that we're different. That's because I get my shape from attaching myself to a bed. A favorite pastime of many humans too, eh? <laughs> Mine isn't your kind of bed though, but a surface filled with oysters. There are only 5 common types of oysters, but we actually come in 150 varieties. The ones people eat belong to a different family than shiny pearl oysters. <laughs> Lucky me, right? My kind aren't even related to those folks. But I did meet the largest oyster in the world. It's called the Pinctada Maxima, and it's as big as your dinner plate. Now, despite my rough outer appearance, I'm very sensitive. On the inside, I have a fleshy body called the foot. It sounds like the thing you put your shoes on, but it's not the same, even though it smells like it sometimes. I also have a slimy tissue called the mantle. That's the part of me that's sensitive. When an intruder sees my shell open and decides to enter, I have no choice but to defend myself. Now, I have no hands to shoo the little invader out, no legs to run away, so I do something else. I produce a substance called nacre. It begins to layer around the irritating parasite trying to live in my shell with me. Over time, I add more and more layers to make sure that it doesn't escape. And that's how my pearls are formed. My cousins in freshwater can make a pearl in 1-6 to six years. But I live in saltwater, and it takes me 5-20 to 20 years almost as long as my lifespan. And let me clear something up. There's a myth going around that when sand enters my body, I produce pearls. But that's only true if the sand has parasites attached to it. I can easily kick the sand out without wasting my precious juice. I just don't like sea worms and bugs. Now, did you know that the pearls we produce have the same coating as our inner shell? Yup, same color and everything. That fascinated a lot of your scientists, and when they broke it down, they found that nacre contains calcium carbonate. This comes in the form of two different minerals. So they broke it down even further and also found some proteins that connect to form something called conchiolin. Think of it as your school glue that holds everything together. All these combined give my pearls that shiny luster. But it isn't as smooth as it seems. Nacre is made of millions of tiny crystals pressed together. Have you ever seen a human rubbing some pearls on their teeth? I always thought it was because they didn't have a toothbrush. Well, as it turns out, the pearl's grittiness can be felt like sandpaper when you rub it on your teeth. It's how you can tell if a pearl is real. Fake ones feel perfectly smooth. Speaking of teeth, in the old days, people thought that a white pearl was the best one. I've even heard you guys call your teeth pearly whites. And it reminded me of some rare pearls in the South Sea. They're very white and top quality. But in some other places, this is far from the truth. There are all sorts of pearls. One, called the Akoya pearl, has neutral pink colors. Sometimes they have creamier green or silver undertones. Other times they can be dyed or bleached. The best way to find out is to drill a hole inside and take a look at the shiny rock. There, you can see its true colors. Did you know that the word pearl comes from the Latin word pyrum? That means pear, you know, like the fruit. You might be used to seeing pearls perfectly round like on a necklace, but they're not really spherical, especially the natural ones. In the 19th century, almost all pearls looked like pears, and the spherical ones were very extraordinary. My great-great-granddad told me that. Now I know what you've been thinking this whole time. Can I open up an oyster at the restaurant down the street and find a pearl inside? Nope, sorry. The edible ones don't produce these precious gemstones. They do make something that has the same texture as their inner shells, but it isn't shiny. There are around 7 types of oysters that produce pearls, and each of them gives different colors, shapes, and sizes to their treasures. So, how are pearls produced? Well, two ways. The natural root and the cultured one. Natural pearls are very rare to find, and that makes them a lot more expensive. I've been around many years, and I haven't come across a single one. Cultured pearls are grown on a farm. Some people ask me if harvesting the pearls damages us. 
Well, that really depends on the person opening the oysters. The best pearl farmers are very delicate when removing them. They even use surgical tools, like the ones neurosurgeons have, to make sure the oyster is unharmed. You see, the older we get, the better our pearls become. That process isn't painful either. We don't have a central nervous system, so we don't feel pain the same way you do. The reason farmers are careful when opening our shells is that they try not to damage our organs. You know, I do have a heart, three kidneys, and colorless blood, right? So they need to protect me. But don't worry, I can see everything around me. I have eyes all over my body. That helps me escape from predators. Once I see a hungry creature coming near me, I shut my shell tightly until they go away. When things get quiet, I like coming out to eat plankton or algae. I got all that knowledge from my ancestors. I evolved roughly 250 million years ago. So that means my species is 248 million years older than yours. <laughs> Not that it's a competition. You know what else I'm good at? Filtering water. You can put me in a tank filled with polluted water, and I can make it clean again. In fact, I'm so fast that I can filter over a gallon of water in an hour. Now, don't try to use me as your kitchen water cleaner. I don't work that way. When scientists found out about my mad cleaning skills, they installed artificial oyster reefs that reduce water contamination. That's because a few of my larger friends in the ocean were struggling in polluted waters. Sometimes, you might even see me spit. That's not because I don't like you. It's just that after all that cleaning I've been doing, I need to get rid of the water. It's kind of like what you do with seeds when you eat watermelon. Hey, you ever wonder where the expression, the world is my oyster, comes from? Well, you have William Shakespeare to thank for it. Remember learning about Bill in English class? It means that the world is yours to open as you wish, that you have endless opportunities to discover. Did you know that people in China were the first to raise oysters in ponds and use their shells for medicine? My ancestors were also famous among the Greeks. Aristotle, the great philosopher, spoke of how he used our shells as ballot paper. My ancestors got so famous around Europe that the Romans used to travel by boat all the way from Italy to England to buy oysters in exchange for gold. But the most useful purpose we had centuries ago was being natural seawalls. When there was a storm and the waves tried to swoop onto the land, oyster reefs protected shorelines. The underwater oyster beds absorbed the energy from waves before they hit the shore. Haha, <laughs> I must admit, my ancestors were epic. Okay, thanks for the chat, and I hope you like my pearls of wisdom.